Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I have a lot of interesting things to share with you. First of all, we are adding a whole program to our membership. It's called Introduction to Informed Medical Decision Making. And so it's going to be included in membership and we're going to spend four hours teaching you how to read your blood test results and how to find a psychologist if you need one, how to find a trainer, questions you should ask, questions to ask your doctor, all kinds of things about being an informed medical consumer and that's going to be included in membership. So I'm going to be teaching some classes in May for all of our existing members who didn't know about this when they first bought their membership because it's all new. I also created several follow-up courses to it. Now those cost money, all right? But um, during the month of April, if you wanna buy the whole series, which is worth um, $1,600, you can get it for $199. So you can save $1,400 if you wanna pay for it in April. And then the classes will go on throughout the rest of the year. Really incredible value. Um, the second thing is membership prices are going up in May. So if you thought about getting a membership, this is the time you wanna do it. And then we have three classes starting at the Institute yet this semester, Women's Health, Dietary Supplements, and Business Training for Health Professionals. So lots going on around here, lots of things to learn and do. And the next Food Over Medicine Certification course starts on um, April 21st. All right, that's all the announcements. Now let's talk about health. Uh, according to a new study, eating a diet high in animal protein can speed up the progression of kidney disease. Um, not the first study that's shown this, by the way. Researchers looked at adults, data on adults with carotid kidney disease in order to determine the relationship between diet and disease progression. And they reported that a high acid load diet, one that is high in animal protein, especially red meat, accelerated progression to end stage renal disease in these patients. Lead researcher Donald, Dr. Donald Wesson said, I love this quote. Our study found that patients with chronic kidney disease who consumed diets high in animal protein were three times more likely to develop kidney failure than patients who consumed diets high in fruits and vegetables. All right, doesn't get any more clear than that. Wesson further stated that the body metabolizes animal protein into acids and that while the kidneys assist in the elimination of the acid, substances produced by the kidneys for this purpose reduce kidney function if they are, remain at high levels for long periods of time. This is not the first study that Wesson has conducted uh, on this particular topic. He's looked on several others that looked at the effects of diet on kidney function and previously reported that both humans and animals, when they convert to a uh, diet that is higher in plant foods from a diet that is higher in animal foods, um, end up preserving kidney function because the body metabolizes plant substances into bases instead of acids. The current study is the largest one to date that has examined the effect of animal protein on kidney disease in humans. So here are the take home points. If you do not have kidney disease, eat plants. It will help you to prevent kidney disease. If you do have kidney disease, you can slow down or stop the progression of it so that you don't end up on dialysis or on the transplant list if you straighten up and eat a wellness forum health style diet. All right, next topic. More studies are showing the relationship between the gut microbiome and health status. And so I'm going to talk about one in particular, but in the beginning it's important to understand how um, the, the microbiome is formed and influences on the health of the microbiome and all that sort of thing in addition to how it can be repaired. Now let's start at the beginning. Uh, babies acquire their gut bacteria in two ways. One is the method of birth. Um, vaginally born babies have higher bacteria counts than cesarean born babies. The second thing is method of feeding. Uh, breastfed babies have higher bacteria count, beneficial bacteria, than, than uh, formula fed babies. So a cesarean born and or formula fed baby is going to have a disadvantage in terms of health of gut bacteria over one that is vaginally born and breastfed. Now a new study shows that there's a relationship between how babies acquire their gut bacteria and their risk of weight gain later in life. Researchers from the Singapore Institute for Clinical Sciences tested the microbial content of fecal samples for 75 infants during the first six months of life. They also gathered data on birth, method of birth, duration of gestation, and the association of these factors with weight status at 18 months of age. Infants born by vaginal birth at full term 
acquired more mature gut bacteria more quickly than those infants born by cesarean section and those born after shorter gestation. The infants born vaginally had higher counts of a couple different types of bacteria, including bifidobacteria, at six months than cesarean born babies. Infants with higher counts of those bacteria were, had lower risk of adiposity at six months. The researchers concluded that the acquisition of gut bacteria was influenced by environmental factors, even in healthy newborns, and that this had an impact on weight at 18 months. Noting that the composition of gut bacteria in babies has been linked to health status later in life, it's possible that the composition of the gut microbiome in infancy could be influenced, could influence obesity or the propensity for obesity later in life. Now, not the only study that's looked at the relationship between the gut microbiome and health and weight for that matter. However, I have been very distressed to see how this information is being misconstrued to infer that taking probiotics which we often recommend as a way to restore the bacteria that's been damaged through taking antibiotics and steroids and other drugs are being constipated. Um, so I'm distressed to hear that people are inferring that taking uh, probiotics might help people with weight loss um, and that it might be a magic pill for obesity. There aren't any magical solutions for our epidemic of overweight and obesity, diet, exercise, and cognitive tools for dealing with eating issues are proven to work and there's no substitute for the hard work involved in addressing those. Ask anybody who's been successful at losing and maintaining weight loss and they will assure you that that is true. So here are the take home points from this study, I think. The first one is best to deliver babies vaginally whenever possible. Here in the United States, we have the highest in, uh, uh, percentage of cesarean births in the entire world. A lot of reasons for it, but two main ones are overweight mothers who grow babies that are too big to be delivered vaginally. The second is a preference for choosing the time and date of birth in both mothers like that and OBGYNs as well. Second thing, method of feeding matters. Women should be educated about the benefits of breastfeeding and the disadvantage that not breastfeeding places uh, uh, causes for their babies. And the third thing is that preservation of the gut microbiome matters. So first of all, if you're cesarean born and formula fed, probiotics are helpful at a very early age. Second thing, particularly antibiotics destroy gut bacteria. And for this and other reasons, they should be prescribed less frequently and a whole lot more responsibly and probiotic treatment should always follow. So the study is interesting from the standpoint of showing the relationship between the gut microbiome and health and weight and all that sort of thing. But again, I just want to emphasize that taking probiotic pills is not going to overcome a long history and continuing to eat the standard American diet, high in fat and protein and calories and everything else. The only solution for that is to change the dietary pattern and to start moving your body until you manage to get yourself lean and to address the psychological demons that often accompany being overweight. All right, that's all for today as usual. Pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.